as someone who works full time with the commute and has a family to take care of, you don't have time or energy to devote hours in the kitchen trying to whip up dinner for the family. That's exactly why I created my ultimate kitchen guide for quick and easy meals. In this guide, you'll find a list of foods that you should have on hand in your kitchen on a regular basis, along with tips on how to put things together on your plate to create a balanced anti-inflammatory meal. Imagine a world where you can come home and whip up a healthy meal in like 20 to 30 minutes and still have time to kick your feet up on the couch and catch up on your shows before bed. Yes, it's not a dream. It's your new reality. All you have to do is head to www.betterwithcarbo.com forward slash guide and grab your free copy today. That's betterwithcarbo.com forward slash guide. Get ready for healthier meals with less kitchen stress. And as a dietitian, while my job is to guide you to navigate through your health, the goal is for you to not need me forever and to point out realistic, sustainable, long-term strategies that you can stick to to get to a place of better health. Are you gonna be 80 years old measuring three ounces of protein at every meal? The answer is no. You have to learn to listen to your internal cues. I'm Chrissy Carbo, registered dietitian and host of the Inflamed in the Brain podcast. Here we cut through the confusion and complexity of inflammatory health to deliver straightforward, bite-sized strategies and information you can easily apply to your life. Not too long ago, I was lost in a sea of information, overwhelmed by the challenges of inflammation. But through years of trial, education, and self-discovery, I learned to break free from the chaos of fad diets and cultivate a practical anti-inflammatory lifestyle that not only helped me stabilize my own diagnosis, but thrive with it. Whether you're an autoimmune warrior or simply seeking a healthier, uncomplicated life, you found your tribe. Join me as we explore realistic strategies that can make a profound difference in your life. So if you're ready to embrace a simpler, healthier way of living, you're in the right place, my friend. Let's dive in, learn, and grow together. Welcome to the Inflames in the Brain podcast. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Inflamed in the Brain podcast. I'm Chrissy, your host, and I hope you're having a great day so far. Today, I think we should talk about becoming confident in the kitchen without using meal plans. This might sound really weird coming from a dietitian, but I'm actually not a big fan of meal plans and I never use them in one-on-one work. This is partly the reason why I don't see a lot of one-on-one clients anymore because whenever I did, they would expect a meal plan to let them know what to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting a meal plan for yourself. We're told by the world that we can't trust ourselves around food. If there's no structure, if we don't measure, if we don't portion out and prepare in advance, then we are tempted, we lose control, and we become fat and we become sick. So meal plans would be the solution here, right? They tell us what to eat, how much to eat, and when to eat, and we have structure so that we don't become fat and sick. But if all we needed was a meal plan to be healthy, then there would be no obesity and there would be no disease. The thing is with meal plans is that they disconnect us from our innate internal cues. They promote perfectionism. And honestly, most of these meal plans out there are so boring. I've seen some of these meal plans where people are eating the same thing for lunch and dinner for like seven days straight. And I don't know about you, but I need some variety. That sounds incredibly boring. And ultimately, what comes from these meal plans is a more chaotic relationship with food and more health issues. When we feel like we can't stick to the meal plan, like it's too complicated, you forgot to buy something at the supermarket, whatever it is, you want a little variety, we end up steering away from the meal plan and then we feel like we failed. We feel guilty. We say, fuck it, and we go back to doing whatever we were doing before, eating however we were eating before. But we weren't entirely happy with that. So we go back on another diet with their associated meal plans, and we do this for years, and over time, we end up overeating and messing up our metabolism, and this is what causes us to gain weight and to get sicker. So the solution isn't that you need another meal plan. The solution is you need to trust yourself and listen to your internal cues and shift your mindset around food. So for today, we'll be talking about why you don't need a meal plan. And I'll talk about a few things that you can do if you still feel like you need a little guidance in the kitchen. Because at the end of the day, our time on earth is limited. 
And I don't know about you, but I've never seen a 90-year-old meal planning in the kitchen. So earlier I had mentioned that meal plans causes you to disconnect from your internal cues. We are all born with an ability to feel and understand physical cues from our body. This is called interoceptive awareness, where we can pick up and understand what our body is trying to say to us. Just like how you inherently understand when you have to poop, we are all born with the understanding of what hunger and satiety feels like. One of the issues with meal plans is that some of them dictate when we should be eating and how much. This can cause us to ignore those internal cues. And when we do, we slowly lose the ability to hear and feel those cues from our bodies until they reach a very extreme point where we feel like we're starving. And once you've reached that really extreme point, your body is in survival mode. So once you're presented with food, you almost zone out and you not only overeat, but you're scarfing down your food as quickly as you can, barely even chewing it. And again, this is a natural response, has nothing to do with your willpower. This is a survival mechanism. So let's say you're following a meal plan that tells you you can't eat till 12, but it's 1030 and you're hungry. You ignore those feelings because it's not 12 p.m. yet. I know because I've been there before. Once 12 p.m. comes, you're starving. You scarf down your food so fast before your lunch hour is even up, but you still feel hungry. Then when you're at work and you're at another meeting and someone brings in donuts, all you're doing is staring down those donuts, not even paying attention to what's happening at work at that meeting anymore. And you're just going back and forth with yourself, justifying all the reasons why you can't have a donut or maybe you should have a donut, but you'll feel guilty. So you tell yourself that you can't have the donut. But by the time you get home from work, you're in the kitchen And you're snacking on the first thing that you can find. Once you're done, the guilt sets in. When we follow a meal plan, this vicious cycle of feeling really hungry and relying on willpower to get you by and waiting to eat and overeating and guilt keeps going, we become more disconnected from our bodies and we lose the ability to pick up on those hunger cues before they reach that extremely ravenous point. And we don't know when to stop until we feel incredibly guilty and uncomfortable. Not only are you becoming more disconnected with your body, but you're also messing up your metabolism and exposing yourself to more food and stress than you need. Instead of following a meal plan that is generic in nature and is given to countless different people, listen to your body when it's hungry. Eat foods that are nourishing and satisfying to you and then stop eating when you feel satisfied. This is another question that I get asked a lot as a dietitian where people are like, Chrissy, how much food should I actually be eating? And with clients especially, they were almost disappointed and maybe even annoyed by my answer because I would tell them, it really depends on you and when you're full. I probably look like a lazy dietitian, but it's the truth. You're not going to be measuring out 200 calories of almonds or portioning your food forever. It's just not realistic. And honestly, it never made sense to me to tell everyone that they need to have one cup of this or three ounces of that because we're all so different. We all have different needs. And as a dietitian, while my job is to guide you to navigate through your health, the goal is for you to not need me forever and to point out realistic, sustainable long-term strategies that you can stick to to get to a place of better health. Are you going to be 80 years old measuring three ounces of protein at every meal? The answer is no. You have to learn to listen to your internal cues. When you're eating a meal where you served yourself or maybe you're at a restaurant, take a break. Think on how you feel. This doesn't have to be a weird abrupt kind of thing where you look like Raven from That's a Raven, having a vision, stopping in the middle of something super abruptly, but just take a break. I usually do this when I drink something. I'll eat, take a drink, question if I'm full or if I can keep going. If I want to eat some more, cool. If I know that if I keep eating, I'm going to feel really uncomfortable or I'm going to be too full, I'll stop. And you can do the same. Even if there's food on your plate, you don't have to finish your plate. You can pack it up. You've got lunch for tomorrow. That's a win-win. Along with disconnecting from our innate internal cues, meal plans can lead us into perfectionism territory that ultimately lead to more feelings of guilt and failure. 
Think about the last time you did a diet plan or a meal plan given to you by a dietitian or a nutritionist or whatever health expert. How did you feel when you made a last minute plans to go out with friends? Or you were honestly too tired to cook dinner on the day that you were supposed to and you wanted to pick something to eat? Or how did you feel when you just didn't feel like eating what was on the meal plan? You felt guilty. You felt like a failure for not sticking to the meal plan. I recently did a podcast talking about how perfectionism can come back to bite us in the ass because if you veer slightly off of the plan, you tell yourself that you'll start over tomorrow or some other time, and maybe you do, but the reality is that's not the one and only time that you stop and restart your meal plan. You start and pause and restart over a period of time because you want to get it right. You want to do a good job. You want to do a great job at sticking to your meal plan or your diet plan. But this stop and restart will ultimately mess up your metabolic health and just elicit more stress, adding to the list of crap you need to worry about for health reasons. And let's not overlook the fact that our commitment to self-care does not come with a pause button. Your body doesn't go, oh, it's the Super Bowl. Okay, so let's take a break. You can eat whatever you want, and I'll make sure that your health isn't affected. Health doesn't take breaks, and it certainly isn't going to wait for you to be ready to address it. The fact that you feel like you need to take a break from your meal plan might be a sign that it's not in sync with who you truly are or your food preferences. Every choice you make, no matter how small, has a ripple effect. Instead of overhauling your entire diet, causing you to feel guilt and failure and overwhelm when you justifiably feel too tired to cook or you made last minute dinner plans to be social, consider starting smaller. What tweaks can you make to just your breakfast for this week? Allow yourself to experiment and be curious and figure out what works for you and what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, cool, try something else. Find a way to eat that allows flexibility and satisfaction so that your health journey not only becomes something that you can do hopefully forever, but it may even become an enjoyable part of your life. Meal plans also tend to require you to measure out your portions and ingredients. The purpose of measuring everything out is to control calories. This puts more power into how much you're eating instead of the quality of food that you're eating, which is way more important, especially in anti-inflammatory health. I always say that 200 calories of Doritos will not metabolize or affect your health the same way as 200 calories of an avocado. Both are the same amount of calories, but your body is going to use those nutrients differently. You can have a meal plan that is low calorie and filled with crap foods like artificial sweeteners and inflammatory oils and food coloring and additives, or you can loosen the grip on calories and focus more on quality real foods like grass-fed animal protein, anti-inflammatory oils, organic foods. The latter will not only show you more anti-inflammatory results like more energy, less aches and pains, fewer headaches, but... It's also a less stressful and overwhelming way to get to better health, which means that you'll be doing this long term. And the last reason why I really don't like meal plans and I don't recommend you use meal plans is because they can be so boring. I've seen some meal plans where you're cooking for hours on Sunday, making like 10 chicken breasts with steamed veggies or whatever it is. And I'm sure that that tastes great for the first night or two. But I don't know about you, I need some variety. After the second night, I want something else. And if you're not even happy with what you cooked in the first place, you get frustrated with yourself because you don't want to eat the same thing every day. So you say, fuck it. You call it quits. And you think that the problem is you because you can't stick to the meal plan. But honestly, it's just boring and it's unsatisfying to eat the same foods for several days straight. Meal plans that prompt you to eat the same thing every day are not only boring, but because their purpose is to provide structure and discipline, they often turn the kitchen into a rigid place lacking in creativity. Imagine being stuck in this kind of like culinary straitjacket where you're precisely measuring every single ingredient, or you really can't because you're in a straitjacket, but you get the point. You're in this place where you need to be very meticulous and you need to precisely, precisely measure out everything portioning out the food, eating the same thing day in and day out, leaving little room for improvisation. What fun is that? Cooking should be fun. Not all the time, but it definitely shouldn't be a monotonous task. If you're looking to improve your health naturally in the long term, 
that should include using food, which means that you have to find some kind of pleasure in cooking in the kitchen. And true joy in the kitchen comes from putting on some good music, laying out your ingredients, and experimenting, getting creative. Try new foods, new methods of cooking. Be curious with how things come out. Add a dash of this, a sprinkle of that. Create your culinary experience and masterpiece. Using preset meal plans robs you of this experience, which will prevent you from building a better relationship with food that could improve your health long term. Now that you understand the pitfalls of meal plans, you may still be wondering what are you supposed to do in order to craft healthy meals for yourself? And like I said, I don't blame you for using a meal plan. You're not sure what to eat, how to eat it, or how much of it to eat. But my point here is that there are other ways to find the answers to these questions that'll contribute to your success long term. And I have a few suggestions for you. The first thing is having theme nights. Having theme nights are great because they provide a little bit of structure in your home and they can help provide a plan so that you can anticipate a little bit on what you'll be eating. My uncle has actually been doing this in his home for over 20 years, and he swears by it because he always knows what's for dinner on a particular day of the week. And I'll be honest, even though I've wanted to, I haven't been super consistent with this in my own home, but it's something that I want to get better at because there are times where I open up my fridge and I have no idea what the hell I'm going to cook. So having theme nights can actually help make your grocery shopping a little bit easier too. Like if you know that you're going to do meatless Mondays and taco Tuesdays, it can guide you as you circle the supermarket looking for stuff to cook during the week. So not only does it bring a little light structure to your meals during the week, but it can also help you in the battle of what am I supposed to be shopping for at the supermarket. If you've been using meal plans as a way to figure out how to put a healthy plate together, a better and easier solution would be to shift your attention from calories and portion sizes to creating balanced meals. Now, it is important to acknowledge the fact that portions do matter. The idea is to move beyond strict measurements. You wouldn't want an entire plate of pasta overshadowing a lone chicken leg, but the concept here is to get you to adopt to a practical and visual approach to make sure that one food element isn't overshadowing another. This strategy is a bit more loose and relaxed than what you're probably used to, but it is easier to stick to in the long term because it allows you to eat food that you love and that is authentic to you and your taste buds, and it keeps you on track with your health goals. Balanced meals not only steer you away from inflammation, but they also boost energy by keeping your blood sugars in check. The beauty of balanced eating lies in the freedom that it gives you to eat foods that you love and find satisfying. This, in turn, helps release the grip of food guilt, which often leads us to overeat and causes more inflammation. I'll drop a link in the show notes to another podcast episode where I'm diving really deep into the nitty-gritty of what makes a balanced meal, but the main takeaway here is to ditch those superficial rules for short-term gains and instead lay a strong foundation for a lifelong approach to eating. And although meal plans can sometimes give you quick meal solutions because you've made those 10 portions of chicken breast and steamed vegetables in advance on Sunday, this can still get really boring and cause you to veer off the plan and make you feel guilty and shameful. Alternatively, what you could do instead of cooking a thousand chicken breasts on Sunday is you can have some quick cook options and even pre-made options here like pre-made rice and potatoes, frozen vegetables, pre-made and quality dressings and sauces. Now hear me out. Pre-made, pre-cooked convenience foods have been getting a bad rap for years. Trust me as someone who's always felt like if something is easy, then it must be too good to be true. But listen to me closely. You do not have to make everything from scratch. There are some really good and trustworthy brands out there that make convenience foods like sauces, dressings, broths, dinners, that leave out all of that not-so-great inflammatory stuff and include tons of anti-inflammatory ingredients. You just have to learn how to read food labels, and it may take a little time in the beginning to pick something up and read and comprehend what's in the back of the package, but eventually, you'll have your go-to brands that you trust, and it'll become a breeze to navigate through the supermarket. And lastly, Let go of the stigma that you can't eat frozen fruits and vegetables. I have no idea where this came from, but again, there's nothing wrong with these foods. Frozen broccoli is just like fresh broccoli, except it's frozen. 
Not only can you whip up a meal faster with these foods, but you can keep them in your fridge or freezer for longer. Another win-win. This strategy, along with creating balanced meals, is key for long-term success. So to make it even easier for you, I have a guide that's called the Ultimate Guide for Quick and Easy Anti-Inflammatory Meals. You can go to betterwithcarbo.com forward slash guide and get your free copy. It's waiting for you there. The last thing you can do instead of depending on a meal plan to tell you how much to eat, when to eat it, what to eat, and this is a big one, a non-negotiable, if you will. The last thing that you can do is trust yourself. Your body is hardwired for survival. It wants you to stay healthy and comfortable and not sick. So listen to it. Listen to it when it's hungry and when it's full. Serve yourself with intention and take breaks and ask yourself if you're still hungry or be feeling pretty good. And like I mentioned earlier, when I start eating, I'll take a break after I take a drink of whatever I'm having with my food. And if after my drink, I feel good and comfortable, I'll stop eating and pack up whatever I have as leftovers. If I want to keep eating more, I will. You decide what your cue will be to do an internal how you doing kind of check. It can be when you take a drink. It can be when you need a napkin. Just think about it. It doesn't have to be complicated. But I do know that this part may be a little bit trickier because for some of us, it's been ingrained in us from society and our parents that we need to finish our plates. I know because I was raised this way. We don't want to be wasteful of food. Wasting food is wasting money. There's children starving in Africa. We've heard it all, right? But to move past this, I save whatever I don't finish for leftovers and I'll repurpose it for another meal. If the portion is really small, I'll save it for a snack for another time. Now that I have a baby who's eating actual food, I'll save it maybe for a meal for him tomorrow or later on. Anything can be repurposed for a snack or incorporated in another meal another day. So there's no need to push yourself in order to finish what's on your plate when you're already full. It'll just make you really uncomfortable and you'll feel guilty for eating too much. If I said it once, I'll say it again. I'm not perfect here. Sometimes I wish I did have something laid out for me that told me what I was going to eat and when I was going to eat it. I'm the one who decides what the meals are and cooks in the house. And sometimes I honestly just don't want to deal. I think I'm going to try to take a note from my uncle's book and have deem nights. He said it drove the kids crazy because they were tired of having the same genre of foods on rotation. But He also told me that he would tell them if they don't like what he's cooking, then they can cook something for themselves, and that usually pacified them. So that's probably what I'm going to have to tell my husband too. Anyway, big picture here is to learn how to get savvy in the kitchen. This is a hard truth that I think a lot of people have some trouble grappling with, but it would fix a lot of your health problems if you just made peace with the fact that you have to cook. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be rocket science. You can utilize those good quality convenience foods that we talked about earlier. One type of client I always hated working with as a dietitian are those who said that they don't like to cook or they didn't want to cook. Like, honestly, how am I supposed to help you if you don't cook? Even if I did take all the time and energy to create a meal plan for you, you have to cook it. So again, you don't have to love cooking and it doesn't have to be complicated either. Just find simple meals that you can cook, get savvy at the supermarket, learn how to read those ingredients lists, and just experiment. How can you find joy in cooking? I usually, even when I don't want to, I'll put on some good music. I might have a drink that I take a sip from every once in a while as I'm cooking. What can you do to make that experience a bit more fun for you in the household? But going back to meal plans, you're not going to buy meal plans for the rest of your life. You can't depend on them forever. You need to trust that your body has your best interest in mind. Listen to it, respect it when it's hungry and no longer hungry. Create balanced plates. And again, take home message. If cooking is too intimidating for you, make it easier with pre-cooked, pre-packaged, good quality convenience foods. They are out there. Well, I enjoyed our little conversation today. I hope you did too. If you did, please leave a review, share it with a friend, reach out to me on Instagram. I'm at better with Carbo. Let me know what you think about meal plans. What has your experience been with meal plans and what strategy are you thinking of implementing within the next week? Until next time, same time, same place.